Hey you guys, it's your sister Truth Seeker getting back on the line for the final episode and review of The Sheared Show. Season 1, episode 8. Okay, you guys, this episode is called When the Trumpet Blows. Okay, it's actually drama going on over Kiera's choice to diss her brother's track for Rodney Jerkins' song. You guys remember that was going on in the last episode. Uh, in the first scene, the Shears family is getting ready to do a photo shoot for the Gospel Today uh, magazine. And Jay Drew and his father, they made up, which was good. Um, his father said what I said in the last video about how he was to let him go and come back. So I don't know if they saw my review and just said, hey, true seeker, she had a point and just <laughs> put it out there. Or it was just very quite obvious, you know, to anyone watching the show or have had that going on with someone that they know and love, you know. Hey, you got you got to let them go sometime, our children, and learn and come back, you know, just like the prodigal son in the Bible. So, J. Drew called his child's mother, Chantel, and spoke privately about Drew going out for a meeting with his new signing label members and to work. Chantel went into reminding him that he has a son, you know, and he's talking about going out to L.A. and having, you know, a party and everything, which she knows in her mind. She's not dumb. He's not going out there just to, you know, <laughs> do business. He's a young guy, you know, like 23, and uh, he's going to do what he's going to do. You know, you can't try to keep tabs on these men. You know, you, you just can't, especially if you're not in a relationship with him, Chantel. So... She was just reminding him, hey, you have a son, you know, and you're going to be all up in the clubs with women all around. You know, she was just not feeling it. Chantel, leave that man alone. You know, he does not want to be with you, sweet pea. You know, it, he said it's been over 10 years that you guys have been in a social relations together. Okay. Yes, you have a, a two-year-old. Absolutely. But... Jay Drew, since moment one and all throughout the show, has done everything possible, short of riding with smoke and chemtrail clouds in the sky, to say that he does not want to be with you, sweet pea. So let him go. You know, let him go with God's speed, honey. And thank the Lord for that. You're missing a bullet. <laughs> you know, if a man is not happy, he does not want to be with a woman, he's not going to be good to that woman. So let him go. Um,. J. Drew revealed that he was livid, actually, in the next scene about Kiera going with a Rodney Jerkins song rather than his song. Kiera said that she did what she had to do to advance her career. And J. Drew said that she, she let Rodney Jerkins actually plant a seed into her head against him, which was dead on true. You know, Rodney went in on J. Drew to Kiera and put that seed there you know Rodney he planted a heck of a seed in her head against him actually you know we actually were watching we saw it was the truth um next thing uh Karen Clark Shearer decided to be a blessing to someone by giving back to a lady who was a volunteer in the church Karen actually said that she did not want to be recognized so her name wouldn't receive any credit or fame for helping the lady. So she went in disguise to go see the lady. Kind of had the lady come sit down for like a little mini interview and everything. You know, just talking with her. Uh, Karen put on a wig and, you know, some glasses and made herself like in disguise look different. Uh, I was a little confused. It will be broadcasted all over the nation like <laughs> what 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 she is about to do for the lady and and it's going to gain her a whole boatload of publicity you know on her name and and family legacy and everything i i just hmm the bible says in matthew 6 1 and 2 take heed that you do not your alms before men your good deeds meaning alms to be seen of them otherwise you have no reward from your father which is in heaven so yeah <laughs> um two therefore when you do your alms don't sound a trumpet 
before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, just all broad and this is what I did, look what I did, you know, that may, that they may glorify you, you know, then you will have your reward because you have just gotten praised by a whole nation of people for seeing you do that good deed. So you may definitely want to, you know, not do that anymore publicly, you know. Saints, let's just be mindful of this for a moment, you know. I remember reading a story about a man who went to heaven. He saw these finished mansions, but his was only a foundation and when he asked the angel what happened he's like where's the rest of my mansion you know the angel told him that whenever he did a good deed it was publicized and that he had received his praise and thus losing his reward bricks for his heavenly mansion that's just something for us all to remember you know and think about so anyway in the next scene uh Kira met with a creative team and they told her flat out that they want her to take a whole new different level and change her image and take her out of her comfort zone, you know, from what everyone would ever think that she would be like, you know, just like a lamb says, you know, you know, hey, I'll do anything, whatever it takes to be successful, you know, she said that and that's not good because once the, once the devil actually hear you say that then he just runs rush shot all over us you know so we definitely want to be careful what we say you know in front of the enemy because he is just waiting for those very same words you know she said hey whatever you need me to do I'll do it to be successful not good Kiki so in the next scene J Drew Drew's label manager Ray whom he just signed up with actually called him very upset you know because he was not producing the tracks that he had agreed that he would produce he was making excuses as to you know why he couldn't and saying that he had a lot going on in his life and the manager told him excuses are for losers you know I'm gonna have to definitely put that on my Facebook page and say that because he said it excuses are for losers so you have to be about your business no matter what's going on you know um, yeah you you don't even he said you don't even contact me to let me know what's going on you know how could you do that and J Drew he apologized profusely you know as he was in the wrong he should have you know uh, he had a meeting with one of the girls in the group that he was uh, doing the producing for actually in the next scene you know apologizing to her as well the next scene Kira was invited to her manager Holly's church and she sang and sang child honey did she sang she sang up there at that woman's church Kira please don't let them change you you got a gift definite gift you can sing okay mama I just want to sing honey Mama didn't let you sing because you can sing. Okay? So next thing, J. Drew had a date with this thirsty chick. The thirsty chick that was in the last episode trying to get Jay to move to, out to L.A. for a relationship. You know, and he started sweating like a prostitute in church. You know, he had to get real with her though and tell her, chill out. You know, she was pushing real hard for you know for him to move closer out there to her you know so they can get started and he told her he was not trying to start up anything he just wanted to stay focused and did not want to be distracted he shut her down honey I mean the shutdown so the next thing uh, Kira actually Kira's mom Karen Clark Sheard went in the disguise that we were talking about earlier and met with the lady you know who was in need with her having um, the woman to explain her tale of woe, you know, in front of her, like a interview or something. She like a social worker type of, you know, environment. And, um, she explained to her, her testimony. And a few minutes later, Karen Cart, she, she just took off her disguise and she revealed herself, um, you know, being, Hey, I'm Claren Clark sheared you know to the lady and she handed the lady a check actually for three months worth of pay on her rent 
and on her car note which was a very nice you know God is definitely still in the blessing business you guys praise Jesus Christ okay he works through people honey people that don't even like you he will cause them to do for you you know his will so praise Jesus that he worked through Karen Clark Sheard to get that woman three months of her rent and car note you know thank you Lord for that he is a miracle worker um, in the next scene Kira was at her video shoot actually and she was worried you know if she would look fat or good or bad in the video and she was really nervous you know I feel her you know I would have been too I'd have been very nervous like oh my goodness how's my hair you know do I have enough curl her ex-fiance Welton Smith uh, he showed up and he she surprised you know Kiara and Kiara was very happy you know she shot some video shots Next scene, uh, J. Drew met with his label manager where he was able, uh, uh, was reminded actually to get focused and stop messing up. You know, don't mess up again. <laughs> you know, you messing up business. So the next scene, cut back to Kiara's video shoot. Um, the next scene, the family attended their church and Bishop Shear preached. And he was up there doing his thing and Kiara voiced her concern, you know, about crossing over to into mainstream you know to the Karen, Karen and, and the Clark sisters who was a group a gospel group you know that was hot back in the early uh, 80s and everything so um, she was very worried about not compromising her ministry you know for the Lord uh, but she said she wanted to perform in a sold out stadium you know and you know Jay Drew you know he's already out there on the limb you know waiting on Kiera to come out into the deep end of the waters where the sharks are at you know J. Drew was defending you know that crossover life you know like like he was some sort of defense attorney or something you know he was defending a man on trial for murder one or something he was just Johnny Cochran <laughs> defending the crossover you know from uh, gospel to mainstream because he had already made it clear in the previous episodes that you know he was sick of this you know just church stuff he wanted to do differently which you know it's been done before you know he wants it so very badly and Kiera wants that crossover success but in order for her to get it she is going to have to really truly cross over to the cross over the godly line to the ungodly world line to get it Satan is going to make a sport of them honey they keep talking about making crossover gospel music as if they will be doing something new you know there's nothing new under the sun that has not already been done you know by other groups and other artists there are already so many crossover so-called crossover gospel artists and songs that are out being played in the clubs so powerless you know that the point of the song is just null and void you know it's supposed to be called gospel song about God in Christ you know they people listen to it and they hear nothing but the beat and you know they ignore the lyrics but anyway um, they go cut to the next scene trumpet blow uh, no cross reference to Jesus uh, in the video they're doing Kiara's video um, I don't see any God in it the word Jesus or <clears throat> God was not in the song at all um, all she kept saying is are you going to be ready when it blows not even he or reference to Christ coming or anything it's like he is coming back soon when the trumpet blows like that that wasn't in there uh, nothing so we don't know who are you talking about will you be ready when the trumpet blows because Satan is also coming, uh, pretending to be Christ, the Bible tells us. There's going to be an Antichrist that's getting ready to rise up. And I also noticed the Eye of Ra uh, in the video. I also noticed that there was just darkness. There was no light. So I couldn't tell the difference between that club life, the darkness, and, you know, when she was blowing the trumpet and doing her thing, you know, in the... Uh, video as far as saying are you going to be ready you know when the trumpet blows 
ready for what? Because there was darkness, you know. I'm just going to say this, you know. Kira, because I know you're going to watch this video. I understand that you want to be successful, you know. And uh, J. Drew, as well, addressing you. However, you have to stay in Christ. I know that it's been hard, you know, being raised in a gospel family. But you can't go outside of Christ to find that success that you're looking for. Because the devil is out there on that other side. There is no crossover that you're going to cross from Christ and, and go somewhere else and be successful. You, you, you won't enter in a successful godly arena. It will be ungodly. You know, and I just love all my brothers and, and sisters in Christ. I was speaking with a pastor friend of mine uh, earlier today. And, you know, he would make a valid point saying that, you know, it's the a lot having to do with the church. You know, even J. Drew said, I'm sick of this church stuff. You know, um, we feel there's no balance. You know, it's kind of like very strict. If you don't do this, you're going to go to hell. You know, but no one preaches about the, the grace and mercy of God. You know, along with that, there is consequences. You know, either it's this whole Joel Osteen, you know, goodie bag, good feeling, you know, live your best life today here on earth. That's just Satan. <laughs> you know, there is no best life today here on earth. You know, don't be in love with the world. You know, don't try to find your life here, Jesus said, because you're going to lose it. You know, so I just look at J. Drew and Kira as the prodigal children that, you know, went off and did their own thing. And I pray that we, you know, they come back. You know, I just know that we all have been through it. And especially when you have a lot of pressure on you. You know, I know what it's like, you know, to live godly when you're really trying to live godly. There are some people who just say, oh, I'm Christian. And they be in the club and, you know, on Friday and Saturday and they just playing but for people who are actually serious about Christ and living a godly life it is difficult some days you know of course we fall remember uh, Proverbs I believe 24 16 excuse me <clears throat> says that a righteous man fall up seven times and then he rises up again you know sin lie at the door you know a person who just lay there and not get back up you know, and I've experienced that. So I do understand, you know, the fall, but, but we got to get back up. We can't cross over, as they say, and stay there, you know. So I definitely, you guys, you have my prayers, you know. J. Drew, lead that harlot woman alone, delicious. Yes, off flavor of love. Yes, we, yes, no. That is not a bring home to mama woman. And I know Karen Clark Sheard is upset about it. I know you got to live your life, honey, but not with that one. That that one, no way, no. Kiera, uh, my relationship advice to you, boo, coming from a woman been married for 15 years, there was a reason why God led you away from that one, your ex-fiance, honey. Uh, like I said, that I was on his uh, intercessors team for quite a bit. I saw quite a lot and enough, honey, and that definitely would not be you know a wise decision i remember uh watching one time we were doing a food drive and he walked past with his little arms you know folded behind his back and everything he was talking to a sister and he was saying that he felt that there was something uh coming in between you and him you know y'all's relationship when you were engaged uh you know hence the you pushing back the engagement you know and it's something about that when a woman is pushing the engagement back you understand it's got to be god in it. it wasn't him it was you kira you know putting off the engagement what nothing would have made him happier than to be married and inducted into the Clark Sheard legacy family, honey. He wasn't trying to lose you. But there was something that made you say, call it off. You know, and even in the this uh these series, you know, when you were speaking with your girlfriend and your girlfriend asked you when could you see yourself back with him? And you said about two years from now. I mean, who says that? So there's something, you know, that's not there. I would definitely pray for you to 
find a good godly man, you know, that's right for you. Definitely your speed and who you need. So I'm going to pray for that for you. But with that being said, I just wish you all the best. I'm going to continue to pray for you. You and the rest of my brethren. And you just hang in there. You know, don't let them change you. You know what I mean? They're already changing you with the video. They didn't took Christ's name out of there. God's name out the video. We don't know who you're talking about. Don't let them change you, honey. You got a gift. Stay with God, you know. So with that being said, love you all. Bless you very much, honey. And stay with the Lord. Stay prayed up. Put on your armor. Ephesians 6, 11. And definitely... Be mindful of the devil because he's very busy, okay? So, you guys, I want you to have a great, productive, wonderful day. I will see you guys later in the next video. You guys, Truth Seeker, out.